Hello, welcome to week two, unit two, using an index to express the elements of a list. In the previous unit, you have learned what lists are and how we can create them in Python. In this unit, we will have a look how we can access the individual elements of a list. In Python, as in most of the programming language, indices to access the elements of a list start at zero. So, the first element in a list has the index 0, the second element has the index 1, and so on. Furthermore, we will see that strings are quite similar to lists. Actually, you could call a string simply a list of characters. And we will also see that we can use indices to access the individual characters of a string. So again, it's showtime. I will switch over to the Jupyter Notebook and I'll show you how to use indices for accessing lists in Python. As I mentioned before, each element in a list in Python has an index. For example, consider the following cell. The cell creates first a list. The list contains fruit, an apple, a banana, a coconut, and so on. And now we can use the index to access individual elements of this list. To access a list with an index, the square brackets are used. So what you see here in line two, fruit, square brackets three, and the square brackets closed, accesses the element with the index three of this list. And the index three is the fourth element. Let's execute the cell. You see, the fourth element in this list is a pair. So there is quite a discussion. In computer science, there has always been a discussion if it's correct to start indexing elements with zero or with one. And there is a famous paper by Edgar Dijkstra, which I linked to in this um, notebook as well, um, which argues that starting with zero is correct. So it's important to get used to it um, when you learn programming. After a while, it'll become very natural for you that indexes start at zero. Actually, lists in Python have more than one index, and this is what I've shown here in the small table. In this table, I again have the fruit list. The fruit list contains an element. The fruit list contains an element apple, an element banana, and so on. And each of these elements is indexed with an index starting by zero. So the first element with the index zero is an apple. The second element with the index one is a banana, and so on. In addition to that, there's also a reverse index starting at the end of the list. So the last element in a list has always the index minus one. The second to last element in the list has the index minus two, and so on. So in our case, the first element in the list has the reverse index of minus five. Let's have a look what this looks like in code. So again, I have here the fruit list, and then I access this fruit list using different indices. First, I access the element with the index four, then the element with the index minus one, and then the element with the index zero. And as you see, the element with the index 4 is the last element in the list, the prune. Also, the element with the index minus 1 is the last element in the list, so we get again the result prune. And the element with the index 0, as we've learned before, is the apple. Now that we know how we can access individual elements of a list, we can also see that lists are mutable. This means that the individual elements of a list can be changed. 
And this is exactly what is shown in the following code example. So I have here a list of prime numbers, 2, 3, 4, 7, 11, and so on. And you might have noticed that this list contains a number 4, and 4 is obviously not a prime number. So what I can do, as lists are mutable, so the elements of a list can be changed, I can access the third element in the list, which has the index 2, and change it. And this is exactly what is done here. So this statement accesses the... In so this statement accesses the third element in the list. This element has the index 2 and sets the value to 5. Let's execute this program. First, we get as a result the list with the 4. The 4 is obviously not a prime number, therefore we replace it. And finally, we get the correct result. So that's an important thing to understand. Lists are mutable, though the individual elements of a list can be changed. We will see later on that you can add to lists, you can remove elements from lists as well. So now let's have a look at possible errors. What happens if I try to access a list element or an index that doesn't exist? For example, I have here again a fruit list and this fruit list has five elements. And what happens if I try to access the element with the index 10? If I do this, I get an error. And this error is called an index error. We see it down here an index error, and it also tells us what went wrong. So the list index is out of range. This means we try to access a list index that was not in the range of possible list indexes. And furthermore, there is also this little mark here, which shows us exactly where in our program the error occurred. So what I could do now, for example, I could fix this change the index from 10 to 1, and then our program would be free of this error. So it's important to remember when you try to access lists, you need to make sure that the index you are using is inside the list of possible indices for this list. So far, we've always created very simple lists. All our lists contained simple data types like strings or booleans. But of course, it's also possible to create lists of lists. And this is what I've shown, or, and this is what I'll be showing in the following example. In the following example, I have two lists, a list of records from the band Ramones. So that's Ramones, Leave Home, Rocket to Russia, and Road to Ruin. And we have a second list here. This list contains records of the Sex Pistols, never mind the Bollocks, Flogging a Dead Horse, and Anarchy in the UK. And these lists are contained or are part of another list which is called records. So if I now access the first element of the records list, I will get the list of records by the Ramones. So basically, this as a result. And as a result from accessing the records list with an index is a list again, I can also combine one or two indices. So if I, for, for example, try to get the last elements in the record list of the Ramones, I would try to access the first element of the records list, so the index zero, and then the last element of this list, this is index minus one. And let's see how this works. So you see, accessing this list, containing list again, with just one index, returns a list itself. And then I can go and access this list, which is a result of my um, first invocation, and for example, get the last element, and in this case, it would be Road to Ruins. And as mentioned previously, of course, I have to take care that the index is in the correct range. 
why would I need to create lists containing lists? Um, it's quite common that when you work with data, you want to structure your data further. So not just have a flat list, but for example, like I showed here, separate elements in this list or group them together. And that, that's exactly when you start creating, for example, lists of lists, or as we will see later, lists of dictionaries and so on. As I mentioned before, strings are quite similar to lists when we talk about indices. We can access the individual elements of a string using an index as well. And this is exactly what is shown in the last example. What I do in this example, I first create a variable containing the string Python introduction. And after this, I access the individual elements of this string Python introduction using an index. First with the index one, and then with the index minus two. So what would be the result? The index one we know is the second element, so that would be the y, and the index minus two is the second to last element, that would be the o in this case. So let ex let's execute this part of the program, and we see the result is the y and the o as expected. Finally, there's also a part I haven't been explaining so far, that's the if statement in the end. The if statement uses a new construct, the in keyword. And the in keyword can be used to check if a list or a string, or to be more, more precise, if a sequence type contains an element. So we could, for example, check if the string Python is contained in the course name. In our example, that's the case. Our course name is Python introduction. It obviously contains the string Python. And therefore, the text Happy Python Programming is printed. So, what have you learned in this unit? In this unit, you have seen that you can access the individual elements of a list using their index. You have also seen that this index starts at zero and that trying to access an index outside the bounds of a list results in an error. Finally, we have seen that strings are quite similar to lists, so that we can access the individual elements of a list using index as well. Thanks for watching and see you in the next unit.